we're back. Hmm. Can I put you through any more of this? Let's do it one more How time. How wonderful. Guess. Stanley was alone. Finally. This is great, he thought to himself. This is what I've wanted all along. I got what I wanted. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Do, 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 do. Shouldn't waste electricity, kids. I walk up on top of the desk. Oh. Usually can't do that. Thank you, trash placement. Nothing else to do there? No. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh, why you Oh, thank you. To be rich, is it a crime? To commit crimes, isn't it rich? What a life it would be to pick just one. Extreme Bathrooms Magazine and Time. Well, <clears throat> picture of a man holding a gun to a panda's head. Our business strategy. Well, So much for that. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud. 
to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Stanley simply began entering random codes into the keypad, knowing full well the sheer statistical unlikelihood that this would ever result in a correct combination. If he knew that the combo was 2845, it would be another story entirely. But no, no, this is what he was going to do instead. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Two, eight, four, five. <laughs> Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in, and the door just <laughs> opened all by itself, and Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. Don't want to be doing this though. No! Fire trap. I'm trapped in here. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Although this passageway had the word Escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. I fear nothing. My Groundhog Day existence. Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise. He reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this really is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Nope. It did not. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Nice 
to see this like museum of the place. Stanley's computer. Filing cabinets. The other office computers. Oh, we can switch them off too. Excellent. Thank you. The two doors. Button sounds. And look, credits. Hmm. We have choices again. The office clock. Boss's office. Employee lounge. Underground. Narration outtakes. Kevin Brighting, the voice of the narrator, recorded dialogue for the entire game roughly three separate times over the two years of development. These are clips from early takes that were not used in the final game. Well, they are not here. There's no way to hear it. Okay. Can't jump down the stairs. What kind of first person ga uh, perspective game is it that you can't jump down the stairs? The office. Maintenance room. Narrator emails. Apartment timer. Stanley's office. The different versions.
freedom ending as it as it ends, uh, freedom ending as it ended in the exists in the in the beta monitor room elevator. Ending model. Ending levers for a section that, that never doesn't exist. Trailers. I go back and fully explore the museum. Countdown desk. First incarnation of the Freena bending. Oh yes, this is the other way around. Yeah, that was over there. Okay, that just leaves the center section up there. Time to blow this popsicle stand. Let's get moving. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Well, that's it, folks. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Goodbye.